This is total chaos. They're arguing about full fat, semi skimmed, skimmed options, a full on milk wars in the Tory party that sums this failing government up. Sit back, get your popcorn out, and watch the Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper not only tear into this chaotic government, but also this nonsense of a Rwanda bill. Well, this is total chaos in the government and in the Conservative Party. This is the desperate, dying days of a party ripping itself apart, yeah. clearly totally out of ideas, lost any sense of leadership or direction. We've got the Home Secretary making the statement, but the rumours that the Immigration Minister has resigned. Well, where is he? Perhaps that he can make that the first question that he answers, whether he still has an Immigration minister in place. They've got open warfare among their backbenches. The starting gun fired on the next leadership election. And once again, the whole country paying the price for this chaos. The third Home Secretary to go to Rwanda with a checkbook and to come back waving a piece of paper, making grand promises. The third piece of new Tory legislation on channel crossings in two years. Each time they've told us the new laws would stop all the boat crossings and send everyone who arrived to another country, but the first law they had to partially revoke because it was making things worse, the second one they haven't implemented because they know it won't work, and now they're on their third new law. Forgive us for not believing that this one's going to solve anything either. But the previous Home Secretary seems to agree with us because she's already saying tonight the bill is fatally flawed. Yep. It won't stop the boats. There. There you have it. One side of the party warning it doesn't come close to meeting Suella's test. The other side appalled that the Home Secretary, who used to wander around the world promoting international law, has just boasted in his statement about a new British bill that tells the courts not just to ignore international law, but to also ignore the fact. What kind of party have they become? And the view from number 10? The Prime Minister has just met with his backbenchers ah. and the official briefing from that meeting says he's told MPs that they've gone as far as possible but Rwanda didn't want to be part of anything that broke or disapplied international ah. law. <laughs> from the Rwandan government without lawful behaviour from the UK, Rwanda would not be able to continue with the migration and economic development partnership. You could not make this up. So our Supreme Court says the Rwanda scheme is a problem because of evidence that Rwanda isn't complying with international treaties on the treatment of asylum seekers, but the only thing stopping the British government ignoring international law completely is the Rwandan government. The Rwandan the Rwandan government keeping us on the, state, on the straight and narrow, and a Prime Minister too scared to actually defend a policy in its own terms, too scared to tell them what he really thinks, too scared to take a view, instead hiding behind President Kagame. Weak, weak, weak. He doesn't deserve to be running the country if he cannot even sort out the issues and the divisions on this, on his flagship policy in his own party. And all for what? For a scheme that will likely cover less than 1% of the people who arrive in this country to claim asylum and will cost hundreds of millions of pounds of taxpayers' money. So I ask the Home Secretary to tell us about the cost. In 2022, we pay, the UK taxpayer paid the Rwanda £140 million, but the Permanent Secretary has said there are additional payments each year. So can he tell us, on top of that £140 million, how much more has already been sent as an additional payment this year? And is there a secret commitment to make annual payments under the Migration Economic Development Plan, even if no asylum seekers are sent to Rwanda? Can he confirm the British taxpayer is also going to have to pay additional millions to sort out the problems in the Rwandan asylum system, even though the government's totally failing to sort out the problems and delays in the British asylum system, which the Conservatives broke? Can he also confirm the UK is paying costs for people sent to Rwanda for five years? Can he tell us how much 
That is going to be, and can he confirm it's going to be at least twice as much as dealing with those cases here? And can he tell us to how much is the total sum that he is going to be paying to Rwanda instead of trying to hide this information? And can he tell us how many people are going to be covered? Because the treaty says it's limited by capacity in Rwanda. The Court of Appeal said it would be 100 people and that talk of thousands of people was political hyperbole. So will he now admit, even if he ever gets this failing scheme off the ground, it will cover less than 1% of the people who applied for asylum last year? And tell us how many Rwandan refugees the UK is going to take and who is going to pay for them. He has a treaty and a law he knows will not stop dangerous boat crossings. We should be taking taking action to stop those boat crossings, to go after the criminal gangs, to clear the asylum backlog. And he knows that Labour's plan to set up the new cross-border unit would have far more effect than the things that he has been talking about today. He says Rwanda isn't the be-all and end-all. They all think it's do or die, and that's why he's in so much chaos. He thinks, and he said it privately, that this whole thing is batshit. Well, that is nothing on what he's had to swallow to come forward and to tell us this statement today. This is total chaos. They're arguing about full fat, semi-skimmed, skimmed options, a full-on milk wars in the Tory party that sums this failing government up. They can't solve their own Tory votes crisis. They can't defend our border security. They can't solve their broken asylum system. And they can't hold their party together. They do not deserve to run the country. Britain deserves better than this. Totally agree. Britain does deserve better. But unfortunately, you get the government you deserve. Don't you? Well, our James, not so cleverly, didn't really say anything interesting other than Labour don't really have any other internationally law breaking plans that is better than our internationally law breaking plan. It's hilarious, isn't it? Now, whether you like Yvette Cooper politically or not, you cannot doubt her as a canny operator at the dispatch box, can you? She's a bit dynamite, isn't she? Beautifully dissected this absolutely chaotic government who I think is incredibly wrapped up in rampant imperialism. You know, pat Rwanda on their head and tell them to go on the way and do whatever the hell we want, come what may, even if it means breaking international law. And they didn't think that Rwanda would say to them, no. But that's my thought. What do you guys think? Was Yvette Cooper on fire yesterday? Is this government still stuck in the nonsense of good old fashioned imperialism? Let me know down below and I shall just bid you farewell and take care, my friends.